guys, so today I'm filming my spring favorites video for 2019, and I think this is something that, I mean, who knows, it might change, but for now, I've decided that instead of doing monthly favorites, I'm just going to do seasonal favorites, because my favorites video have always been really short, and especially since I'm always doing project pans, I'm spending most of my makeup wearing days, which actually that's every day, I don't know why I said that, I'm spending most of my days wearing my project pan makeup and not really experimenting with a ton of other stuff, or, you know, I had been doing palette of the month videos. I didn't do one this month, but I did focus on a particular palette and I kind of wish I had done the video, but at the same time, nah, it's okay. But I, you know, I just haven't had a ton of favorites previously. So I think seasonally is the way that I'm going to do it. So let me know your all's thoughts on that. Do you want to continue seeing monthly favorites or do you enjoy seasonal favorites? And I do always do my seasonal makeup must-haves. So it'll be interesting to see out of all the products that I picked, what were the standouts? when the season is over. So that might be interesting. Anyway, it's still a relatively small favorites video. I've got select amount of beauty favorites. I do have some random favorites, some songs, and some of these, you know, I really loved in March. And now I'm filming this on June 2nd. I'm like, mm, are they still my fave songs? Kind of, we'll see. I'll mention them anyway. So the first thing that I fell in love with was something I had put into a project pan. This is the NYX Hashtag No Filter Powder in the shade number two porcelain. You can see I have used it up completely. This is a baked powder. They no longer sell this at Ulta. They do still sell it on the NYX website. They sell some colors in store at Target and I think a few more colors online. This is like $12, which is way too much for a drugstore powder, let me tell you. But this did last me a while, so you get 0.33 ounces or 9.6 grams. The NYX powders don't come with a lot of product and are already a ripoff, but this one lasted me a while. And why I really love this is because it did give really nice coverage and it was a good color. This is a little dark for me. It worked if I used my Durham Blend Translucent Loose Powder to set my face first so it was no longer sticky. And that powder also lightens the look of my skin a little bit. So when I put this on top, it matched perfectly because if I would have put this right on my wet foundation, it would have really adhered and it would have looked too dark. But this just made my skin look very flawless, very airbrushed. I really love this powder and I do think I will repurchase it at some point. I have a bunch of other powders I need to work through, but this is definitely one of my favorite pressed powders. This one and the Maybelline Better Skin are my two favorites, but I would recommend this one. My friend Jean sent this to me a while ago, but I'm really happy I put it into my project or else I wouldn't have realized how much I love this. My next beauty favorite would be several eye looks I created over these past few months, which has been really exciting to not just be stuck to one palette, but just play around with some spring colors. And I'm really fell in love with all, all of these looks. There are a couple looks that I wore last year and I was gonna mention them in my yearly favorites because I hadn't noted a bunch of different eye looks, but I couldn't remember what they really were, how I liked them. So I did them again and they really are amazing. And then there are a couple looks that I created using my custom And my next favorite would be several different eye looks I created with these three palettes here. So the first one would be my Sephora Baby Z palette, which has all of my single shadows I picked out to use for spraying. I love looking at this palette. It just makes me so happy. Really quick, I'll give you a breakdown of what's in here. So we have MAC Stars and Rockets, MAC Shimmer Moss, MAC Expensive Pink, MAC Free to Be, Luxie Purple Haze. These are all Makeup Geek, Pillow Talk, Black Light, Carnival, Wisteria, and Makeup Geek Sure Thing. These three are ColourPop, Secrets, Softcore, and Labyrinth. And I didn't use all of these, but I used a lot of them. So the look I'm wearing today, I really love as well. So on my lid, I'm wearing the ColourPop Super Shock Shadow in Daddy. And then for my transition color, I use Makeup Geek Carnival. For my crease color, I use Makeup Geek Curfew. So I had done this look a couple different times this month, and I had actually filmed a monthly makeup basket for April, but then I, where I wore this look, but then I never ended up putting it up because by the time I got around to it, it was like almost May, so there was no point, but I loved it then. Then on a separate day, I wanted to wear this look again in a video, and it looked a mess and something about that eyeshadow the daddy shade on my lid it can look kind of choppy and 
The Makeup Geek purples are a little bit powdery. They can be a little bit inconsistent. So what I did was apply my transition color, my crease color first, made sure to really focus it in the socket, really build it up. It did take quite a bit of layering. Then I did go in with the daddy shade on my lid and then I did touch up with a little detail brush right in my crease to make sure there wasn't any gap in color and that application style worked really well for me, much better than putting daddy on first and then trying to build up the other colors. And I did try to bring it down on my lid a little bit again so that I wouldn't have this like choppy look. Another look that I love from here was the one I had worn in a video yesterday my hit it record it thoughts on haul and i had look see purple haze on my lid which is so metallic so shimmery i used color pop secrets as my transition color and labyrinth as my outer corner and crease color because i didn't want this one to look too pink because the other looks i loved were a little more pinky purple so this one was a bit more subtle especially because this one does have a little bit of brown mixed in and also i mixed these colors with a little bit of anastasia birkin which is slightly a neutral pinky tone transition color. So I did mix that with these two in my transition crease to make it look even a little bit more neutral, not so pink, and that worked really well. So I did enjoy that look a lot as well. I will have that video linked up in the cards so you can see how it looked in my eyes. And then I did recreate two eye looks out of this palette that I had done last year and I love them just as much this year. So the first one would be using Makeup Geek Black Light on my lid. So this is one of those purples that has like a pinky and a blue duochrome shift to it. It's super stunning. So that was on my lid and then I use ColourPop Secrets as my transition color and ColourPop Soft Core as my crease color. So this was a very pinky purple look but I really enjoyed it. Instead of just putting this one with the other purples where it wouldn't have stood out as much, to me I think it stood out more mixed with these pinks and it was just really pretty so I loved that look. And the other look I created was probably my most favorite and that was using Makeup Geek Pillow Talk on the lid which is this really pretty icy purple color. It has like some silver mixed in there and it's very reflective on the lids. And then I used Carnival as my crease color and max free to be as my transition color you can see it is similar to soft core but it is a lot brighter it has a little bit more coral in it where this one's a little bit more dusty and that made the purple and this lighter shade really pop i love that eye look maybe the most out of all the ones i created with this palette so i love all these shades in general definitely recommend them and i was very happy with the looks i created again i will link the different videos where i wore these looks for you guys so you can see how they actually looked on the eyes but i absolutely love this palette i always put these colors together every year or i guess i should say i have for the past two years and i really really enjoy them so i would definitely recommend all of these shades except makeup geek sure thing that one is just when you're trying to pack this on the lid it's very difficult to pull off you do need a matte white base and you really need to pack on several layers just because this one is so pale and pastel it's not good it's not the most opaque but i can make it work but yeah i didn't use that one this year but the rest of them i did use in love the next look i really enjoyed was from the Oh, I almost hit myself in the face. You see that? The ColourPop My Little Pony palette. And inspired by Georgia Harris last year, I did rearrange the shades in here because sometimes when I look at a ColourPop palette, I'm like, why y'all got the matte cream down here and the black over here? Like, hello. Like, let's put a matte cream up here. Let's put a black down here. And sometimes ColourPop palettes are just all over the place and I don't understand the arrangement. Other brands do it too. But like, I am just such like a logical typical OCD person in the sense where like in my mind I'm like obviously the light goes here obviously the dark goes here why are y'all mixing them up that don't make no sense but I did use this peachy row I did use this pinky purple row I did not use the blue row I should have but I didn't so I do really enjoy these pinky purple row this purple shade is a little flaky so it does need to be built up it does need to be put over more of a cream base I love this shade, this rosy color right here the best. I think that one's really beautiful. And my favorite look with this palette would be this top row here. I didn't use this like 
shimmery yellow tone cream color but these other three I love so basically I would put this more orangey shade on the first two-thirds of my lid and then I would take this more corally shimmer shade on the outer two-thirds of my lid and then I would take this matte peach as my transition and crease color and then I would take a little bit of that in the outer part of my crease. I freaking loved this look. I couldn't believe it. I really didn't expect it to be so intense on the eye but both of these shades have like they're not so standard like this more orangey one has a pink shift. This more peachy one has an orange shift. They're so pretty and I really like this color and it can be built up to look a little bit more intense on the eye again especially because I'm fair skinned but I you know this palette was limited edition so I apologize for mentioning something that you guys can't get but hopefully you guys already have this and I have contemplated taking apart some of my ColourPop palettes and just making one of the shades I love but I really hate destroying palettes but the good thing is here that these are magnetic I mean you can't buy a single off the website and put it in here because they're not the same size but I'm considering doing that because I would take out these three shades here and then probably this color so let me know if you think I should do that I when I rearranged these shadows I did put the shade names on the back of the pans Maybe I can go ahead and make up a palette and see how it would look and then make a decision. I know I have some friends I could pass the other colors on to, but I don't know. All that aside, I do love that color, but these three right here looked amazing on the eye. I couldn't believe like how special it looked to me, so I absolutely loved that. My other favorite palette of the month is the newest one to me. This is the ColourPop Sweet Talk palette. I was going to film a palette of the month review, but I didn't because I've already told you guys my thoughts on ColourPop shadow formula, and I find them to be very consistent amongst the different palettes. This one, I love the packaging first off. Did I say that already? So here's what the palette looks like on the inside. I do kind of like that this has more like a duochrome holographic look to it although it kind of throws off the camera so this palette I think is a little bit more expensive than the other 12 pan palettes which is usually $16 this might be 18 and that's because there are a couple different finishes in here so you do have their regular pressed powder shadows you got some mattes you've got this one is a shimmer and this one is a shimmer then you have one super shock shadow in here and it's supposed to be a special formula that won't dry out and then you've got these two pressed glitters. So first off, I do love that this palette doesn't have a black. It just has this really, really dark reddish brown color. I use that one a tiny bit to line my lower lash line, but you guys know I don't really use dark colors a whole ton. But this palette is gorgeous. I love these kind of peachy shades. As you can see, I do love peaches, but they're different than the singles that I have. I think that this one is like like a muted salmon color. It's so pretty, and those make a really great like these four are like that same peachy salmon-y tone, but like different depths. Those could all work together to make a beautiful monochromatic matte eye look. I have created three different looks using this palette, and they've all been featured in different videos this month, so I will have those linked down below for you guys, because I believe I've run out of cards at this point. I really actually liked the Super Shock Shadow. This is more of like a a layering shade so I did try it on its own which is really pretty because this is really reflective and shimmery and then I did try it one day paired over this color and that was really beautiful as well so I absolutely love this palette I think the formula is very consistent with other palettes but I do not like at all the pressed glitter so I actually have not tried this shade and it's stunning girl but I did try this color here. I wish they just made these shimmers. I do think it's cool that they tried to do another formula, but you guys, oh my gosh, these are worse than the Huda Beauty glitters in her palette. They totally fall apart. I put glitter glue on my lid. I really tried to pack it on. I got glitter stuck all in my lashes, all under my eye. It got stuck to my face and made an absolute mess. There was no wiping this away. And then when I removed my makeup, this got in my eyebrows, it got in my hair, on my clothes, it was all over Justin. I was trying to get glitter off of me for like four days afterwards and I cannot stand that. So for that reason, I probably won't use those two glitter shades, which is a huge bummer because I think they're beautiful, but wow, I hated them. So I definitely do want to try them again, especially because I haven't actually used this color, but please give me your tips on how you think that I should use these pressed glitters because 
they were not that easy. But the other colors in here I absolutely love. So I would definitely recommend picking up that palette. And my next favorite would be a mascara. This is the Stila Huge Extreme Lash Mascara. And this does have a natural bristle brush. It is an hourglass shape, but it isn't as intense as the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. It's a little skinnier, which I like because it's easier to get into my lashes. This is a, a natural bristle brush, as you can see. It is a very wet formula, which I love because I think it helps my lashes have a lot of thickness, a little bit of clump, but I like that, and some length as well. I really, really, really enjoy this mascara. If I am able to get this half off during 21 Days of Beauty, I will definitely purchase it. I have another little mini my friend Jean sent me that I will happily use up. I am trying to use my mascaras in the order that I received them, oldest to newest, but I really enjoy this one. I definitely would recommend it if you like a wet formula and a natural bristle brush and you like volume. Lastly, I've got some Morphe brush favorites. So I purchased these when I went to LA with Justin. I did film an entire recap video from my trip and a little mini haul, so I'll have it linked up in the cards. I did purchase more brushes than what I have here, but y'all know how much I love my cheek brushes specifically, and I've been using all of these every single day. So I wanted to share them with you again, tell you how I use them. And it's so funny because these two brushes in particular were like impulse buys and I knew I didn't need them, but I was like, whatever, just buy them. And they're probably my two favorites. So this first one here is the Morphe M462. I'll have like the actual titles listed in the description box. This is like a very dense duo fiber brush and I have been using this to apply my bronzer. So this does, you know, pack on a decent amount of bronzer. It just blends it out quite nicely. So I have been using this all spring with my Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer and that worked so well. I did recently try this with a different bronzer that's a little bit more pigmented and it looked really intense. So I think I'm gonna have to use my regular e.l.f. stippling brush with other bronzers that are more pigmented because that one's a little bit more flimsy and this one is a little too dense for really pigmented bronzers for my skin tone. But this does blend out nicely and it's not too big for my cheeks. Definitely recommend this. It can be good for powder if you like a light layer of powder, but for bronzer, I think it's fantastic. The next brush is the Morphe M447, and this is like a pinched brush here. And this is really awesome for contouring because it isn't so, so pinch it's going to be really intense. I am able to place my color and blend it out quite nicely with this brush and it's just not like a standard contour shape which I really love and this one is a super super soft brush so definitely recommend both of those. Next I have the Morphe E4. This is their Elite Collection which is a little bit pricier but I think it's the best collection they have. The brushes seem to have the best quality and they're very very soft and this is their angled blush brush. The reason I purchased this one is because my angled blush brush is from the Walmart brush line which they've long discontinued. I've had this since like 2010 and I've just been terrified of it falling apart. So I purchased this one. It is very similar. It's a little more flimsy and it's a little smaller which I actually prefer over my other one. So I've been using this every single day since I purchased this and it is just the perfect size for my cheeks and it is great at applying blush. And I can use this even with really pigmented blushes. I just pick up a tiny amount and it blends it out really nicely because it isn't so, so, so dense. I mean, this is not a flimsy brush, but because it's not so, so, so dense, it doesn't put on my blush too intense. So really loving this. And this brush, I didn't like it at first, but the more I've used it, the more I liked it. I think it was just the formula I was using this with. So this is the Morphe R31. This is from the Rose Gold Collection, which is a little pricier. And for me, it's not... I don't see why it's pricier because the Elite Collection makes sense. These are, you can definitely tell, are better quality. These, not so much, but some of the rose gold brushes they don't make in the other ranges. I don't mind having the silver ferrule, but anyway, I have just been using this because I believe my friend Danny or Danny Bow on YouTube was using this in a video as a highlight brush, and it is so nice at packing on highlights. I don't think it works as well with every formula, or sometimes you just kind of have to like dig your brush in there a bit but it places, I basically, I just place it like this and then we'll try to 
blend it a bit sideways, but it works really well to really place highlighter on the cheeks and absolutely love that. So I love all four of those brushes, would highly, highly recommend them. And I'm so happy that I purchased them from the Morphe store. That was just really fun to be able to go to a Morphe store for the first time. And of course, now we have one pretty close to us in Tyson's Corner. It opened up, I think at the end of April and I haven't gone there yet, but there are a few more brushes that I went to get. So I would love to know your recommendations for Morphe brushes in the comments down below. It's really exciting to be able to see them in person and be able to feel them and whatnot. So those are all of my beauty favorites. For my random favorites, I got some songs. So I'll just have them all linked down below if they have music videos. Wow by Post Malone. Of course, I think it's so cool if you guys saw that viral video of the man with a really long beard dancing to it. And people kept saying like, oh, this is a grandpa breaking it down. And the guy's like, I'm not a grandpa. I just have a beard. But Post Malone actually put him in the music video, which I thought was so cool of Post Malone to do that. Do Re Me by Black Bear. That music video is like disturbing to me and very weird. And he, I, I don't get him, but I haven't listened to any more of his music or seen any other of his videos. It's a weird video, but I really like the song. X by Kiana Lead. Close to Me by Ellie Goulding, who has an amazing voice. Without Me by Halsey and Talk by Khalid. So I will have all of those music videos linked down below. And thank you all so much for watching this video. Let me know what you think about seasonal favorites as opposed to monthly favorites. I would love to know what things you enjoyed over the spring season. And I would love to know your thoughts on these products in the comments down below. Again, please give me some recommendations for your favorite Morphe brushes. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys.